Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be going over request validation in Node. And this is a super important topic because when a request comes in, you want to make sure that it's formatted the exact way that you expect it to be. And you want to make sure that all the properties are there and all the types of those properties are exactly what you expect. And the reason for that is that you don't want to insert malformed records or just wrong records into your database. You want to keep that as clean as possible. So to do the validation, we're going to be using a library called Joy, which makes it super easy and it should be pretty straightforward. So let's get into it. So right now I just have a basic node app here and it has one route defined, which is a post request to slash sign up. In order to start validating requests, we first need to create a schema. So let's come up here and do const sign up schema is equal to joy and we want to import that and then we want to call the object method and in here we pass in an object and we could define all the different properties that we want so we want an email and the value is going to be equal to the joy type so we could call joy.string and then we want it to be an email so we'll call the email method and lastly we want it to be required now we could come down and define password and we want this to be a joy string as well. We also want it to have a minimum of three characters. So we'll call the min method and a max of 10. And then this is going to be required as well. So now that we have this schema, we could come into our route handler here and we can call the validate method. So every joy schema has this validate method on it and it takes in a value here. And that's the value that we want to validate. So in our case, we want the request body and this validate method returns an object with error and value properties. So we could come in here and destructure those. And now we want to check if there was an error. So we could say if error, we want to first log that error so you guys could see what it looks like. And then we're going to return a response. So we could say invalid request. And this value property is going to be equal to whatever payload we passed in. So if the schema validates, then we're just going to get that payload in this property here. So if we hit save and go to postman, make a post request to slash sign up, and let's define our body here. So we need an email. And right now I'll just make it invalid. And then we also want to define a password. And I'll leave that empty for now. So if we hit send, we should see invalid request. And if I open up the console here, you can see this is our error. And it has an original property, which has the payload that we passed in. And then it has a details array. And this array is going to be an array of error objects. And each error object has a specific message tied to it. And then just some extra info about the typing and the context. So instead of returning invalid request, we want to make it more descriptive. So we could just return error.details. And that'll just be this error array. And also, if you see back in our request, we never passed in a password. But in here, all we're getting is that the email must be valid. It didn't even check the password. So ideally, we'd want to validate the entire request and send back all the errors it returned. So in the validate method, we can pass in an options object. And in here, we want the abort early property. And we're going to set that to false. And what this does is that when it's true, it stops the validation on the first error. So when it checked email and saw that it wasn't valid, it didn't even go on to check the password. It just returned the error. So instead, we want to check all the fields and then send all of those back in here so that in the front end, we could get all the different errors and display that to the user. So now we get the email and the password. So before I go on to add more properties to the schema, I want to wrap all of this logic of creating a schema and then calling the validate property and then returning this object. I want all of that to be wrapped in a closure. So it's going to make things a lot cleaner. So let's go in here and create a new file called validator.js. Now in here, we could create a function called validator. And this is going to take in a schema, which will be a joy schema, and it's going to return a function. And this function is going to take in a payload. So that's the payload that we want to validate. And it's going to return the output of that original schema we passed in. And we're going to call the validate method on it. 
and then we're going to pass in that payload that we used that we got from this function. And then we also want to pass in those same options. So abort early is false. Okay, so now that we have this validator, it's going to take in a schema and it's going to return this function, which takes in a payload and it calls the validate method on this original schema we passed in. And we're going to be returning the output of this. So we're invoking validate here and we're returning the output of this. So we're going to eventually be returning that error and value object. So let's just bring in our signup schema in here. So we'll just copy this. I actually need all of it. I don't know why. And now we can come down here and we could export a function called validate signup. And this is going to be equal to validator. And then we're going to pass in the signup schema. So now this validate signup function is equal to whatever validator returns. And if we look up here, validator again takes in a schema and it returns this function. So validate signup is this function, which takes in a payload, tries to validate the schema that we passed in, and it's going to have access to this through closure. Whenever we use validate signup, it'll know to use this schema. And we're going to pass in that payload. And whatever this returns is the same thing that validate signup will return. So we can come back to our app and we could just call validate signup. And then we'll pass in the request body again. And now all of this should still work. I need to get rid of it up there. And we actually need to define joy up here. So we never imported that. So now if we hit save, we should get the same functionality. And you can see we still get the same errors and that's all being logged and the schema is still being validated. So now you could see when we start getting a bunch of different schemas and it gets a little bit messy, we could just create these validator functions that will return new functions that we could then use in our controllers like this. And this is a lot cleaner and, and nicer. So let's go and add more properties to our schema. So the next thing I want to add is the confirm password. And we want this confirm password to be equal to whatever the password is here. And to do that, we can call the joy.ref method. And this is going to take a string, which is a key in this schema. So we want the password, so we'll just pass in password. So now this tells joy that we want the confirm password to reference this password field. And if this is different, then it'll throw an error. The next thing we could add is an address. And we want to make this one level nested. So to do that, we could just make it equal to another object and just for simplicity, we're going to add a state and it'll be a joy string. And it's going to have a length of two. So we're just going to use the abbreviation for the state and it's also going to be required. The next thing, next property I want to add is date of birth to show you guys the date types. So we could do joy.date and then we can call the greater method. And this method is going to validate that whatever value we pass for this field it has to be greater than this date that we define. So we could say new date, and we'll just say 2012-0101. So the date has to be greater than 2012. And this is also going to be required. So let me save this and let's start adding some of these properties to our request. And we want to make sure that these are valid now. So we'll do one at one.com. And the password, we'll just do something random. Then for the confirm password, it has to be the same. And then we want the address. And in here, we want to add a state. I'll just put in CA. And lastly, we want the DOB. And in here, we could just pass a string like 2020, or actually, I'll make it an invalid date first. So 2010, 01, 01. So now if we hit save, we hit send. You can see that the only error is this date, and it says the DOB must be greater than 2012. So that's all working. And you could see if we didn't pass in a state here, that error returns address.state is required. So that is working. So I want to undo that. And then let's go back to our schema, and I'm going to define a couple more properties. So the next property I want to add is referred, and we want this to be a joy boolean. So we'll call the boolean method and then we want it to be required. 
And the next property is going to be referral details. So for this property, we want it to be different typing depending on what this property is. So first we want it to be a string. So we'll call that. And then we want to call the when method. And this method allows us to create the joy typing based on a condition. So the first parameter we want to pass is a string for the property we want to reference. So we want the referred property. And the second parameter is an object. And on this object, we could define an is property. And this is where we have our condition. So we'll say is true. So when referred is true, then we want this to be a joy string and we want it to be required. And we also want it to have a minimum of three and a max of 50 characters. So if this is not true, we want to define the otherwise property. And here we'll just pass in joy.string and then the optional method. So now when referred is true, it'll be this type, but otherwise it'll just be an optional string. So now let's go down and define hobbies. And this is going to be a joy array. So we'll call the array method. And then we're going to call the items method. And this method takes in an array of joy types, or if it's only one type, like in our case, we could just pass that in and we're gonna call joy.string. So this tells joy that the hobbies should be an array with these items, which is just joy strings. So this array can only be strings. They can't be booleans or objects or anything like that. But if we wanted to add something like that, we could just pass in joy.number, for example. For the last property, I wanna do accept TOS, and I want this to be a joy boolean. And then I'm going to call the valid method. And this method also takes an array of values or just one value if there's only one. And we want it to be true. So this tells Joy that the only valid value for this field is true. So except TOS has to be true because that's the only value we defined in this valid method. And then we want this to be required. And we need to add a comma here. Now, the last thing I want to add is in here after the Boolean method, we can actually call the truthy method. And here we could pass in a string like Y, or we could type yes or whatever we want. And that'll tell Joy that if this accept TOS is equal to yes, that'll resolve to true. So you could pass in a handful of values that you want to eventually resolve to true. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and leave a like if you enjoyed and also subscribe if you haven't already. That would help me out a ton and leave any feedback you have or any suggestions for what you want to see next in the comments. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.